Are you hearing me? It's just common sense. On March 4th, 1805, as president, he offered a national prayer for peace. Well, let's look at his prayer real quick and let's see if it's like, you know, just one of them gobbly gook little, you know, them kind of liberal prayers where they don't ever pray nothing. Let's look at it and see what we find. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land, honorable ministry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitude brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endow with Thy Spirit of wisdom those to whom in Thy name entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice, peace at home, and that through obedience to Thy law we may show forth Thy praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness And in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in Thee to fail. All of which we ask, say it with me, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sound like a pretty good prayer to me. How about you? Say, he didn't believe in Jesus. He'd never use Jesus' name. He'd never talk about God. Lie, lie, lie. Truth. Okay? Again, I'm not trying to get Jefferson to heaven. God's called me down here right now to try to get you to heaven. Amen? Okay, and by the way, if he ain't there, he ain't there, and he ain't getting there. You still got a chance. Amen? All right, let's keep looking. Did he trust in God? That's our question. As president, Thomas Jefferson signed bills. Say bills with me. Bills which appropriated financial support for chaplains in Congress and in the armed services. As part of the Articles of War signed on April 10, 1806, he writes to the soldiers and to the officers, earnestly recommended to all officers and soldiers diligently to attend divine services. Now Jefferson's the guy that we get all the time people quote him, separation of what? Church and... Say it with me again. Separation of can't ever have state and church and church and state. You can't ever do nothing like that. That's evil, evil, evil. Can't ever do it. Well, here he is signing a bill paying money to chaplains for the Congress and to the army. Okay? That doesn't fly. There is separation of church and state, and it's great. It's a good thing, and we're going to see that. But it's been made to mean something else. Amen? It's been made to mean you shut up, Christian. You shut up. And don't give your opinion. Be quiet. Amen? You can do it in the house. That's not what it meant. Are you hearing me? It means that you have the freedom to not worry about your government. You're separated from that where you can have freedom. This is a land of freedom. Are you hearing me? That you can speak about Jesus Christ. You can speak about your faith. You can get in your car this morning. You can come to church without being hunted down like a dog. You have freedom. I have freedom to preach. Whether you like it or not, I have freedom. That's what it means. Not that I can't speak. It means I can speak. Do you hear me say? But if I, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If somehow we can get you to believe that you can't speak. And there, there goes the Gospel. There goes our mission. There goes our way to reach people for Christ. Amen? So we can't ever give up on that. And thank God for Jefferson because we have that right. Let's keep looking. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. What did he write about the freedom of religion? Now this is quite long, but we're going to read it. Here we go. Several things. What did he write about the freedom of religion? Did he write that you shouldn't have you know, the right to say things publicly and talk about God and stuff like that? Here's what he said. The constitutional freedom of religion is the most inalienable and sacred of all human rights. You have no greater right than to have your freedom of religion. That's awesome. Keep looking. Among the most inestimable of our blessings also is that of liberty to worship our Creator in the way we think most agreeable to His will. 
A liberty deemed in other countries incompatible with good government and yet proved by our experience to be its best what? What's he saying? To be able to have freedom of religion, to worship God, is one of the best supports of this nation. Amen? You thought getting up on Sunday, you didn't know why you were coming. This is a great thing you're doing. It's good for you, it's good for your family, it's good for everybody, it's good for America. It's great on Sunday morning to see cars going around. Where are they going? We're going to church. That's good. That's a good thing. If somebody asks you, that's stupid, you say, well, Jefferson didn't think it was stupid. Jefferson, he was a deist. No, he won't. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Here's what he said, quotes, in our early struggles for liberty, religious freedom could not fail to become a primary object. We had to focus early on, he said, on religious freedom. I have ever thought religion a concern purely between our God and our consciences for which we were accountable to Him and not to the priests. Okay? And you're not accountable to me, friend, for your spiritual condition. I want to be a blessing to you. I want to be a good leader for you, a good helper. But you're accountable to God. I can't spend all day with you. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's what He was saying. That's not a bad thing. Now, for by some, that could be a bad statement. It's not a bad statement. I think that's biblical. Religion is a subject on which has ever been most scrupulously reserved. I have considered it as a matter between every man and his maker, in which no other, as far less the public, has the right to intermeddle. That's great. That's true. I agree with that. You need to get right with God. Amen? I need to get right with God. I am for freedom of religion and against all maneuvers to bring about a legal ascendancy of one sect over another. So is Pastor Clark. Amen? Aren't you glad you have freedom in this country to worship freely the way you would love and like? Amen? There are many denominations. That's awesome. That's not a bad thing. It's bad that we're not speaking the truth of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, that we perverted Scripture, things like that. That's not a good thing, helpful thing. But to be able to go where you choose, and we're all a little different, that's, that's a good thing. The clergy believe that any portion of power confided to me as president, he wrote, will be exerted in opposition to their schemes, and they rightly believe, for I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. But this is all they have to fear from me, and enough, too, of their opinion. Okay? He made a lot of preachers mad, a lot of clergy mad. <laughs> Listen. Because he stood up for your right, my right, between us and our Maker. You see what I'm saying? And that's not always the way it's been in our world. You know? There's corruption in all kinds of areas of ministry and things like that. And he, you know... I'm not saying he may be the greatest guy ever. I don't know. All I'm saying is, I thank God that he stood up for religious freedom. Believing that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. Okay? I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting the establishment of religion. Or, say it with me, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building, say it with me, a wall of separation between church and state. That is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. It is a good thing that our legislature does not make laws favoring one religion or one sect or one denomination over another. Amen? You think Congress has screwed up a lot of things, let them get into running the church. Amen? We make a mess of it ourselves, right? <laughs> the point is, is that that's a good thing that the government doesn't make rules that prohibit our free exercise of religion. It was never meant to be, ooh, can't say that. You can say that. You can be a congressman and still say what you want to say. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you can talk that way. You hearing me say? But we've made it now where perhaps you, you work in a school or government office or anything like that. If you speak of your faith, 
that's wrong. And they'll say to you, you can't say that because that's separation of church and state. You can't say that here. That was never intended to be that way. Are y'all listening or did y'all not get that? Thomas Jefferson. I'm really mortified to be told that the United States of America, a fact, now this is long, but listen to this. He's mortified, he says, that a fact like this, the purchase of an apparent geological or uh, astronomical book, could become a subject of inquiry, and criminal inquiry too, as an offense against religion. That a question about the sale of a book can be carried before the civil magistrate. Is this then our freedom of religion? And are we to have a censor whose imprimatur shall say what books may be sold and what we may buy? And who is thus to dogmatize religious opinions for our citizens? Whose foot is to be the measure to which ours are all to be cut or stretched? Is a priest to be our inquisitor? Or shall a layman, simple as ourselves, set up his reason as the rule for what we are to read and what we must believe? It's an insult to our citizens to question whether they are rational beings or not. And it's blasphemy against our religion. And he's talking Christianity. To po suppose it cannot stand the test of truth and reason. If this book be false in its facts, disprove them. If false in its reasoning, refute it. But for God's sake, let us freely hear both sides if we choose. Amen. That's good stuff. That's good. I want to tell you this. You read the Word of God. You take your Bible. I don't need to manipulate you. I have to rely on the Holy Spirit anyway to work in your life. Your, the Word of God can stand the test of time. It has stood the test of time. I don't need to manipulate and say, now don't do this and don't do that and don't do this and don't, 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 because if you do, you go get all screwed up. I say this, you read the Word of God and when things come down to pike in this world, you be solid every day in your Scriptures, you repent, live one day at a time for Jesus. I tell you what, I believe you can handle most things the world throw at you. Your faith can stand. And that's what he was talking about. Let's not set up a system where this isn't allowed or this book isn't allowed. A lot of books are crud. I can't stand them, okay? But I'm glad I live in America.